and we all want to have a chat now. So I do. Far away, Will. Okay. So I, I want to come back to the MOOC scene, uh, online learning, all of those sorts of things. <laughs> but I know you have got some reservations about it, just from your own experience, John. Because you you you've um, been switched to online. In one yeah, of the courses I'm, you've been I'm, I'm not I'm not going to go into detail exactly about my own experience at this time, but um, yeah, it's it's quite difficult because those of you who don't know, I'm I'm severely visually impaired, um, and to read uh, to to be able to navigate a screen. Um, on a on a on a computer, I use um, sc- screen readers, and uh, when you try, uh, it's it's practically it's really impossible to try to get a screen reader to work with, to try and get to try and share a screen, someone share a screen with you, and then actually it's it's not possible at this time for a screen reader to read what's on somebody else's shared screen. So it's so. I will say online learning is not possible at this time for for blind and visually impaired people unless they have uh, somebody to be their eyes. So you, you've actually got to have somebody there to help you mm. on on yeah. On, yeah. The, on the way it's set up. I wouldn't be able to do it, but I wouldn't be able to um, follow follow the. I wouldn't be able to access the material on my own. Not 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 through online learning. So. The practicality of the practicalities of an online course for many um, visually impaired blind people isn't practical. If they use this, if they use access technology slash assistive technology, so the vo- voice interfaces that aren't, aren't available really. No, in a way that they, yeah. not at this not at this time. So you would hope, but you would hope, and I don't know, in the next ten years maybe even sooner that these things become more accessible so you know I, I, I understand that it has its challenges there might be accessible learning platform online learning platforms out there but you have to remember particularly it only moved on it was originally a face to face course it only moved online because of the pandemic, so it was so. What you, just explain a little bit which course you talk you talk. About. I'm de- well. I I uh, I, ba- I, pra- I basically finished the course now. I've done. I've got I've got my final um, writing exam next Tuesday. Um, uh-huh. So I basically finished the course, and uh, and uh, but all the I've I've been going. I went down there yesterday f- just to just to practice actually in the centre. With with with, uh, what, with with one of the support workers, they uh, to visit the, to actually meet up with um, the bl- the guy who supports me in class, and um, and he's going to be reading he's going to be reading bits for my uh, writing exam f- for me. So um, I went down to to uh, work with him yesterday, uh, but pre uh, but. All the curriculum up until the the pand uh, right up from to when the pandemic first hit, it's been taught online and it's really really been a challenge because I because it's not you you could talk to any blind or severely visually impaired um, person and they if they if they haven't or if they are working online or trying to do a online learning um, course, they no doubt will experience some hiccups with with the um, system, especially Zoom, because bear in mind that that uh, Zoom wasn't designed for learning. Um, so I'm not saying if. If the online learning system has been designed for um, visually impaired people and blind people, then it would be possible to for us for assistive technology to work quite well. But I'm not sure when online learning systems are built that they think about um, visual impairment and um, and 
uh, or slash blind people, completely blind people, even though there are very few bl blind people around, because most people that are blind can actually see, can actually see a bit. So your sight has to really fall under a certain level to be, to be legally um, deemed blind by, by um, your local authority. Um, but um, but you know it does it really does present its challenges at this moment, at this moment in time. It, it really does have challenges for for people to even access the materials. And if you don't, can't mm -hmm. access the materials, you can't follow the course very well. So no. So you really do. It's it's you're at a distinct disadvantage. So so anyway, if anybody's got any anything to add to that discussion, I would love to hear. I would love to hear um, other people's experiences that are blind and visually impaired. So if anybody wants to call in. They can call into the studio or let us know the the, the um, experience on Twitter. To find our phone number, please go to phonic.fm. Well, yeah, for, well, um, yeah, I don't think... I think tw Twitter's going to be better, um, W-E-N-O-T-N-O. -O. Well, yes, I think but, I made my colleague pack, panic there, but it, but it would really be nice to hear some some people's experiences. Well, we might... We might we might cope with them, but other than that, we might cope other with than that, I think I think it is a shame because uh, other than that, I think online learning is brilliant. But you have to bear in mind that even if you are not blind and visually impaired, for some people, online learning doesn't 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 work. Some people still prefer face to face. Yeah, or a mixture, or so a mixture. Yeah, some sort some sort of way of blend, blending it all together. Yes. Yes. Definitely. What, what, I, what I wanted to to, to mention, um, I th I think it's quite um, quite an interesting bit of news, because um, we have spoken about the MOOC the MOOC scene quite a lot. We we speak about FutureLearn, which is a UK well UK and Australian uh, approach, but there's also Coursera in the States who right. had an I an IPO recently, so they're they're pro now properly funded. And um, about a week ago, edX uh, was sold by um, MIT and Harvard. So they've got several hundred million dollars right. in the bank. And okay. they've announced um, they're going to research a new model. And there's, there's quite a lot of debate on this. If, if, you, if you follow our, our tweets, there's a, there's a link there to Class Central, who are a bit um, sceptical about it. They can't really understand why all the money has gone back to um, Harvard and MIT. But I think what I'm going to admit as a possibility is that they actually mean what they say, that they're going to spend the money on research. There will be a set of code um, using AI to a large extent that makes... Um, courses or education or learning or online uh, whatever it is um, on an, on another level that's going to be wildly accessible and uh, take us all into the future whatever I mean I think it's, it, it's sort of difficult I'm, I'm going to do it in the form of a play um, because that's the easiest way of doing it that you can have all the reservations about it as well because Maybe um, in another five or ten years, Harvard and MIT will will sell that off to somebody. <laughs> Quite possible. Quite you just, possible. You just don't know. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. Things can change at a rapid pace. They certainly can. So you have to keep yourself up to date with the information. Well, we have to. We have to try. Yeah, people can only try their best. Um, but let's. Let's have one element of a dramatic situation, credibility that Harvard and MIT are going to do what they say they're going to do, and that they're capable of doing it. I'm not. I put it no higher than that as a probability, <laughs> but I think it's just it's just a possibility worth worth um, worth keeping up with, trying to pay attention to. So if, follow, follow our tweets, and you'll you'll find the links to all, all of this. 
I think that's that's all I need to say, John. If you want to play some more music, or okay. 